Okay, let's see. Uh, let's get going here. We've got a lot to cover tonight. Who all's in here? Anybody else in the room with me? Madeline. Hey, Maddie. Madeline's here. Okay. So let me start off the evening by saying congratulations. You have finished uh, EDAP 688. What I want to do is I want to go through process in a great amount of detail as to how we're going to handle the final. Uh, the final is essentially you are going to develop the little five lesson mini unit and those lessons can be consecutive. In other words, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, here's what we're doing. Or they can be one lesson that would represent uh, something that you teach, another lesson that might represent another something that you teach. Uh, in other words, it might be the first lesson of unit one, first lesson of unit two. In other words, I'm giving you the freedom here to design this any way you want to design it. And I think we've beaten this horse enough, but I just want to make sure that we de-stress this process because it's not hard. So what we want to do is we want to look at using the stuff that you already have. Now, if you don't have a classroom, uh, the resources to do this are still available to you. But I would start with looking at course your standards because that's where everything should start. Remember, that's what Grant said. The key to this is the curriculum is not the textbooks, but we always start with standards. And that's the beginning of our journey of understanding. And we need to understand where that journey is going, and that's the standards. So when I say up here that technology may be embedded here, that is only if it is a part of what the course is about. So your established goal does not necessarily have to have technology embedded in it, okay? This can be straight up as students will understand linear equations. Uh, I was just looking yesterday at another class, we were doing a demonstration, and we were looking at um, primary grades, understandings of fractions. And we lifted the language, which is what I'm telling you to do, lift the language right out of the, um, standards that the state puts out. And if you don't know where those are, yell at me. I'll show you where they are. And then you come down here to what students will understand. But now here's where you as the instructor, you as the teacher, you as the professional kick in. The essential question, what is it we're trying to get at here? You know, Again, go back to that one video of Grant where he's doing his uh, PD, and he talks about this. Essential questions do not necessarily have simple answers. You know, two plus two is, is not an essential question. It's that how question. It's that what question. It's what drives the thinking deeper. And then over here, kids will have to understand that the following things exist to be able then to approach the essential question. And technology can be embedded all anywhere in here. Um, again, why is it over here under essential questions, Steve? Because if you're teaching a technology course, okay? But here, students will understand that you might have a technology infused piece here. Kids will understand that an infographic is used to explain things through the use of text and graphics, you know, be that simple. Students will know, students will know whatever it is that it takes for them to understand the standards. And then students will be able to. Here's your performance task. This is the ability of kids to do something. And this is where 
Remember Grant talked about that all education is about understanding that's transferable. I say oh, education that's applied, same thing. And then you may have other evidence here. In other words, you may have a, a summative or a formative uh, evaluation. Don't have to have anything here. Don't have to have anything here if you don't have it. And then stage three, what are we gonna do? Students will create an infographic that demonstrates their understanding of opinion versus fact. Boom. Okay. Um, and you do five of these. Now, if you do it in that consecutive order business, guess what? Most of this isn't going to change, is it? The only thing that would change is right down here. Okay. Uh, most folks end up doing it that way. Now, let me draw your attention back up here to the assignment. So for our hat, you will develop a technology-rich curricular mini unit consisting of five lessons using the Understanding by Design template and addresses the TPAC framework and UDL model, which, will, which pulls together your teaching philosophy, technology integration skills, and curriculum development model. So the curriculum development model is already done, right? All you're doing is you're using that. Your TPAC is where you realize that the technology is the last part, not the first part unless you're teaching a technology class. It is the last part. It is the supporting piece that supports that wonderful dance that Schulman talks about between content and pedagogy, that pedagogical dance, that pedagogical slide where depending upon what it is you're trying to do, the pedagogy may change and the technology may change in its use. Okay, because the thing that drives it all in that TPAC model was context. Remember we talked about that there are times when you have to stand and lecture because you have to introduce new vocabulary, new words to kids. They have to hear them. They have to see them in context. They have to understand how they fit into their prior understandings. But then we do it. We do a pedagogical slide where then we ask kids to work in groups to come up with new models that will define the new verbiage. Context drives everything. Context of now let's use the new vocabulary in ways to see how it fits when it's applied, okay? That's TPAC. So technology in that instance fits in last. Now the UDL, don't let UDL scare you. Universal design for learning, basically all we're doing with universal design for learning is to provide those multiple pathways in. And that's how technology shines in all of this stuff. Remember the story I talked about where the kid who um, had Down syndrome participated in an AP American history course because the teacher allowed him to create an iMovie for his final project as opposed to writing the 20 page uh, term paper. It's that multiple pathway in. And where would you put that? Well, that might look like and I would hope it would look like right here. Allowing to have the multiple learning activities that kids can choose from, that gives that kid who struggles with writing, but yet has great ideas, or the kid who struggles with reading, frankly, has great ideas. Now the technology part here, that should really shine. Given kids an opportunity to use technology to display their understandings is is about as straightforward as it gets in terms of UDL. So don't let the UDL scare you. The UDL can represent, again, those multiple pathways in to the benefit of all. So if you just give kids an opportunity to use technology, realizing that the kids who struggle will find the use of the technology as a boost, it helps them. You know, infographic is a perfect example. Uh, kids creating uh, an infographic using pictures and words as 
as opposed to just words alone. Okay, fine. So the kids who, who excel in your class, they don't have trouble with that. And they'll turn in these really deeply detailed infographics. The kids who struggle will turn in infographics that have lots of pictures and few words. As long as the pictures are telling the story or they're depicting the understandings, what's the harm? Okay, now let me get to the other part here. I have a doodle pool poll sitting out there to reserve your day and time to show off your mini unit through the Collaborate Ultra. And here's the link. Let me explain Collaborate Ultra real fast. So I'm going to jump back in here. See, here's Maddie. Maddie and I are in here. And we're all alone. We're just sitting here together, um, sharing a glass of wine, wondering if this is ever going to end. But what I wanted to show you was everybody that comes in, like Maddie right now, when she comes in, she is a, I don't know if it shows up here. She's a collab. She is a moderator. She, in other words, she has the same power that I have. Did you know that, Maddie? So Maddie can run this room. So when we get together, when Maddie signs up for hers, she's going to come in here and she's going to click on this link right here that says share content. She's going to come up here and she's going to click on that link that says share the application screen. And then she's going to share the entire screen. Now, I'm not going to do it because it'll screw up what we've already got going here. That's how you'll do it. And what will happen is then you are taking over. I'll be sitting in my office or probably sitting in here in this classroom. You'll be sitting wherever you want to do this from home, school, you know, pick your venue. And then you will basically just take me through and show me your little mini unit. Now, let me pop back out. And let me, there's the doodle. I think we've got enough choices here, guys. Okay. And the way it works is you come in and you decide that you're going to do your presentation um, Wednesday the 24th. And you want to do it from, say, 2 to uh, 3.30 or 4 to 5 or 5.30 to 6.30. I don't know why I gave uh, that. No, it's 2.30 to 3.30. So everything's an hour. Okay. You're going to come down here. You're going to put your name in there and you're going to select the one that you want to do. So it starts on the 24th of October and goes all the way through to the 29th of November. Okay. I think that gives you plenty of choices. You just put your name in here, check the one you want. That's the doodle. Now I will send this doodle link out uh, in the announcements, you know, that go along with tonight's um, recording so everybody will know what to do. Let me make sure we're still recording. Yep. Worries me sometimes. So that's the doodle poll. Now, I want to clear up some misunderstandings that I've received from some folks about the live text, specifically about this part of the live text. A lot of folks who've had classes with me or are used to seeing the live text broken out into these sort of module and they're separate. So like module one, two, three, and so on. What I did for this class is I put all those modules together into one live text um, assignment. And here they are. So well, like the first one, you were to go out and look at those videos that were housed in the um, well, you're making picture chart that helps me understand your understanding about TPAC and Tim. Then you're supposed to go find a TPAC video and you are going to use the various instruments. So this one, what I asked you to do is to go through, put the link to the video that you're using for your TPAC and Tim here. Then I want you to go through and tell me how you would score the video uh, in terms of its curricular goals and technology, instructional strategies, technology selections, fit, instructional use, technology logistics. In other words, how does it fit? Does it work? Is it too hard to see what's going on? And then the Tim is, remember we talked about Tim is basically um, the, from the student standpoint. 
So in other words, are they working alone? Do they use this? Is it just the teacher who's developing and delivering it? Uh, does teachers create a, an environment that infuses the power of technology tools? I, uh, this one, I tell you, I don't know if I showed it to you, but, but the one that says, what is it? Using maths, M-A-T-H-S. I still don't understand what that means. Using maths. Um, that video, I think, is the best job of, of this one right here. The guy is really, he's really good. He's got a good way. Unfortunately, you don't see the kids. You just see him managing the kids through the use of the iPads. So, again, you were supposed to go through and do the same thing here in bold, how you would score it. How is your concept of educational planning not uh, changed? This was using the GoAnimate uh, tool to uh, create your own little GoAnime to demonstrate how you see your teacher role. Excuse me. I hate bringing my phone with me for that very reason. Now, we've had some issues with the other assignment that uses Storyboard That. If you are having a problem with the Storyboard That, if you will just let me know, um, and we, you know, we'll talk. Uh, I'm at the point now where I'm, I have contacted the storyboard that folks after someone told me that they had a very difficult time getting it to even work. And the storyboard that people are basically giving me the sort of, well, just send us the web or the uh, screenshots and show us what's going on. Well, the fact that you have to sit there and click and wait and wait and wait and wait, that's not a screenshot thing. <laughs> that's like you have to take a video and send it to them. So if you can make it work, fine. If it's not working for you, please, please let me know. And then below this, this is your first swing. And I told you to make sure that if this is something that you are pleased with, well, don't hesitate to use it in your final. And then finally down here, this is where I asked you to create an Ed puzzle and Put the link to your creation here. So you're going to create an Edpuzzle that demonstrates um, the UDL concept by finding a video. And boy, there's a ton of videos in Edpuzzle. Don't let it, you know, don't limit yourself just to YouTube if you don't want to. There's lots of videos in there, but they all work the same way. And you being able to put, uh, as I call them, heads up in the Edpuzzles where you can drop in and leave an audio note to focus the kids. Very much a UDL kind of idea. And then you can put little formative assessments all through um, the video. Um, it's a really good tool for universal design for learning. Okay. And then that does the one. Let me go back up here. That's the one uh, reflective papers bit. And then the other one. Of course, the other assignment is the final that we just talked about, and it's right here. And this one is where you do all of the work in here. In other words, you basically just put everything in this uh, these boxes that I've put here on the screen for you. If you're having trouble with it, and there's all five, so there's five of them here. If you're having trouble with it, or you just don't like working in the boxes on the screen, there it is. So there's the Word doc right there that you can just essentially open up and save. Um, and it will come up and it will come up and I'm sorry, I clicked off of it. I shouldn't have done that. Let me bring it up again. This, this, um, Word, it's on this uh, computer here in the ERTC, wants me to install some updates, which of course I don't have the rights to do. So I'm going to say, ask me later. There we go. Okay, so there's your format right here uh, in Word. If you're much more comfortable with Word, you know, please feel free. Make sure you turn on the enabling editing. And then there you go. So that's all right there. Save it and then upload it as an attachment into the final in the live text. Do you know how to do that? Does everybody know how to do that? Uh, it's essentially just come down here 
and there's a link that says add attachments and you just basically walk through and say I'm going to put this file in here you could either do it uh, at this level or you can do it in the comment feature either way I'll find it I'm not worried so that is pretty much it for the final so let's review our final is made up of creating a mini unit that reflects the ideas behind the TPAC and understanding by design frameworks. Technology is not the first, unless you're teaching a technology class. Technology supports the pedagogical dance and the understanding by design. We need to know where we're going before we start the journey, which is always, always right there. Boom. And then everything else just flows down from that. We have stressed, I think, enough that you're probably sick of me saying it, that just because it says technology may be embedded here, the keyword there is may. It doesn't have to be. Uh, if I see just one box here, like down here where it says uh, activities, if that's the only place where the technology is, good on you. Because you are seeing what the TPAC is trying to teach us. And that is technology should support. It shouldn't be technology for the sake of technology. It should support. And it can support the learning, in other words, using a technology tool to support the learning. We make an ed puzzle so kids can see this is what we've been learning in class. Let me point out to you using the ed puzzle, the important information. Oh, well, let's take a quick little formative assessment to make sure you do have it. Understand, I want to make sure clear you understand this about the ed puzzle. If you did use ed puzzle, you would go in and create a class within the ed puzzle. So as each kid came in and did their little ed puzzle for you, their results would feed back to the ed puzzle. Okay. And it isn't just a, well, what do I do with this? Now, the other cool thing about the ed puzzle, hello, is it has links that take it to the Google classroom. <laughs> and now your everything gets solved because the kids would see it when they go into the Google classroom, they would go in, they would experience the ed puzzle. And then the results go back to their login in the Google Classroom. Uh, I, I, I think I keep harping on the ed puzzle and don't get me wrong. You don't have to use it if you don't want to uh, for your final anyway. Uh, it's just one of those things that just makes sense to me. I think one of the things that's really starting to come to fruition is that a lot of these sites that are technology based for kids to create on or for you to create on for kids to experience all have hooks back to the Google Classroom. I mean, you go in and you look, you look for that share button. Uh, it usually looks like uh, three dots with, it uh, looks like a triangle. You click on it and you look and it'll say things like Facebook, Twitter, or so on. Look for the Google Classroom, which is basically three little heads inside a square, inside a rectangle. And then whatever you've created in that, if you click on that, it'll ask you, so where do you, what topic do you want this to go to? And you do a drop down and boom, it goes back into that topic. It's just that easy guys. So I think the technology piece, don't let it scare you. I definitely don't feel like you got to put it in there one of these boxes. Again, that's why it says maybe. Uh, the doodle poll, as I said, I'll be sending it out today. And in fact, it's right here. It's, it's here in the link. There it is. Um, you pick the date when we will get together using the Collaborate Ultra. And you basically all you'll do is just bring it up and you'll give me a sense of what your thinking was. And what I'm looking for in that little, you know, brief one hour chat is I can hear in your understandings how the TPAC fits how UDL fits, and then of course, the understanding by design is obvious in the way that you fill out the mini unit.
I hope we've had we've had clarity in everything we've done. Um, I feel like sometimes people get to module four and they're like, what? Because we had, the, it's just almost overwhelming the number of things that you could use. Please use something you are comfortable with. You know, if, if you have a technology that you use in your class that you're very proud of, please, please use it. I do, some people say to me, um, so what do people get out of this course? And I go, first of all, they get a framework. They get a structure that helps them understand. Because so often I think people think technology in the classroom is the first minute you walk in to the last minute you walk out. No. No. And I hope you've gotten that message through our understandings of TPAC. Secondly, I hope you've gotten the messages from uh, Grant and, and Jay that you need to know where the journey is going before you start it. The textbook is not the curriculum. The textbook is not the curriculum. The curriculum doesn't just happen. There's no serendipitous, oh, look, we're doing something cool here. It must be planned and it must be based upon standards. The technology can fit into the understanding by design, either through the use of one of the facets of understanding those five facets of understanding that we looked at that don't have any hierarchy. In other words, one's not better than the other, but you can employ technology through one of those or the technology can just stand alone as an assessment piece or as a research piece. And then finally, in my, where my heart lives, the universal design for learning piece says, that if we can use technology so that we have those multiple pathways in to the benefit of all, then the technology helps us make it so we don't have to do, and I have to be careful here because there's an awful lot of investment into, into Tomlinson, but I just, I just don't buy that whole, I just don't see it. I don't see differentiated instruction. Now, you know, some people will argue with me and they'll say, well, how else do you have, you know, I get it. I get it. And maybe in a special needs class, I would do differentiated instruction. I will stand, you know, next to nobody when it came to data collection in my special needs classrooms. You walked in and I handed you a book that was the data collection on the kids that were in my room and it was all differentiated. What I'm talking about is in that classroom where you have 24 to 28 kids, UDL is the answer, not differentiated instruction. Multiple pathways in to the benefit of all and multiple pathways out, multiple, multiple demonstrations of understanding, which is something that Jay and, and Grant argue for. Finally, and I know I'm rambling, but I really want you to have this in your heads. I think the most important thing that we have to understand are the two mantras that come from Grant and Jay. You don't start the journey unless you know where you're going. And then the one that I just think is so important, we just don't seem to get, even though we have a superintendent in JCPS, it's all about the project-based learning. We still don't get it. And that is, all of education is understanding that is transferable, or as I keep saying, applied. And those demonstrations should reflect that. Sure, I can solve for X, but what does it mean? You know, you know the old line about you learn algebra, but you'll never ever have to use it. Well, that's not true. <laughs> that's what we're trying to get at here. Okay, as always, if you need to reach out to me, you know how to do it. Send me a text, 502-457-2937. I think I've given you enough stuff here to sink a battleship in terms of the amount of material for you to use. 
If you are using something in your classroom already that is technologically based, please don't reinvent the wheel, use it. But I will hope that what I'll see when you're done is I can see the reflection of TPAC, I can see the reflection of understanding by design, and I can see the reflection of the universal design for learning in that tool that you already use. I'll ask the one person who's sitting here with me, <laughs> and that's Maddie. Maddie, do you have any questions for me, dear? Just type me back an answer. And I have been recording. Okay. Are you having, tell me, Maddie, are you having the same problem with a storyboard that, that it is just goes so slow that you click on it and it just sits there and goes, wait and wait and wait? Oh, are you logging in as Steve? Okay. Then why don't we go look at that real fast? I think we're going to have to have an accident. Those of you who have been with me before, you know what that means. All right, so I'm coming up here. I'm going to assume you can see this, Matty. I'm going to log on, and there's SBSwan02 with the password ULIT241. Let's see if I get in. Okay. Okay. So, but what we're wanting to do is, let me go back to the link. We're wanting to get into the one that the lady made is about UBD. So let's go see if I can get into that one. Okay, here I am and I'm in and customize this storyboard. And let's see, click on that and it looks like I can fill in the blanks. Now, Maddie, here's my question. Were you trying to log in as SB Swan at 002 at mobile.edu? Let me log out of this. So let's go ahead. I'm going to put in my full email and see if it lets me in that way. Okay. I see what you're saying. Well, let's try it. All right, let me in that way. That was SB Swan zero two. All right. Let's go back and see if this will let me log in with the, yeah, there's my email all the way out. Yeah, it does. Okay. So it looks like either use of the email or use of the, will let you do it. Now let me jump back where I can talk to you, Maddie. So, when you do that, does it just say it doesn't know who that is? It doesn't know the user? What does it say to you? I was in the wrong password. Are you talking to me? Hang yeah, on. I was using the wrong password. 
Try talking to me again, dear. I could hear you, but I had to turn the volume up. I was just using the wrong password. Okay. That's so fine. you're now using ULIT 241? Yes. I, I saw on the... I did put the that in there, didn't I? It says access key. Let's go make sure. I was using that access I key. I make mistakes, Maddie. No, it's my fault. <laughs> I can see where I would have messed it up for you because it's got this other thing down here I put in. Class name. I see. Did you try using this access key thing? That's where I screwed you up. Yeah, that was my mistake. I don't know why. I All should right, have noticed the do. same for every website. <laughs> Let me fix that right now while you're sitting there looking over my shoulder. Let's go fix this. And I think what I was trying to do was, I hope I'm not making you sick by zipping around on the screen like this. E-A-S-S-W-O-R-D colon U-L It's there. Yep. Okay. Let me know if you have any other trouble with it, Maddie. Okay. Oh, I need to get rid of this. I see what I did here. Uh, I've got multiple logins set up. And I think what I was thinking was we would literally use it to create our own instead of just using hers. But we don't need to be doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and fix it so that the only thing that we need to be using is my username and password. There we go. Got it. Got it. Okay. That should clean it up. But it still doesn't answer the question because I've had uh, another student talk to me about they've gone in and used it and it just sits there and takes forever for it to even to do anything. So if any of you are having trouble with the amount of time that it just sits there and kind of spins, please let me know that. Okay. And we'll see what we can do about it. All right, Maddie, now that we've cleaned that up, and thank you for uh, telling me, I think we're done for this evening. As remember, as always, you reach out to me at 502-457-2937, and do not forget to sign up for your time that you will come and sit with me in the virtual space. As I always say, we'll sit around the virtual campfire, um, and we'll have, you will do your presentation of this marvelous uh, five 
unit, a five lesson mini unit that you're going to create. I look forward to seeing them all. Good night, Maddie. I'm going to stop.